Hello everyone. This is Dr. Jeet Priyadarshini working as assistant professor in the Department of Entomology, Agricultural College, Ashrafe, which comes under Professor Jay Shankar Telangana State Agricultural University. In this video, I will take you to a sericulture unit which is located near the Aligudam village of Ashrafe, Mandal. This unit belongs to the former Jitendra Garu. In this unit, I will show you the mulberry garden and the shed which is used for rearing the silk worms, all the appliances and equipment which are required for rearing of the silk worms, marketing facilities which are available for transport of the cocoons and finally the cost benefit ratio for running this sericulture unit. Cultivation of mulberry plants is known as moriculture. Mulberry garden is must for a successful sericulture unit as the mulberry silkworm, Bombex mori, will feed only on the mulberry leaf. Mulberry is a deep-rooted, perennial, hardy crop. The soil should be deep, fertile, well-drained, clayey loam to loamy in nature, friable, porous, with good moisture holding capacity. The pH of the soil should be around 6.2 to 6.8. Mean temperature of 24 to 28 degree centigrade, relative humidity of 65 to 80 percent are ideal for growth of mulberry. The quality of soil of mulberry garden influences not only the leaf yield but also leaf quality which in turn influences the growth and development of silkworm. Subsequently, the quantity and quality of cocoon production. This is a newly evolved variety V1 which has highest yield potential and suitable for irrigated conditions. This is the rearing room and the dimensions of this rearing room 70 by 22 feet. Inside the bed dimensions are 55 by 6 feet and this rearing room can accommodate 400 DFLs. Rearing room should face east direction to have good ventilation. All the doors, windows and ventilators must be covered with mesh to protect from the entry of insects and vertebrates. Around the rearing room, there should be provision of veranda of more than 6 feet in order to protect the worms from heavy winds and rain. This veranda must have the provision of leaf drying facility in order to dry the leaf before feeding in the rainy season as the moisture on the leaf may lead to disease attack. Mulberry silkworm belongs to the order Lepidoptera family Bombycidae and its scientific name is Bombax mori. This has four different stages in the life cycle, egg, larva, pupa and adult. In the larval stage, it mould four times and there are five different instars. Adult female moth lays around 300 to 400 eggs, popularly called as silk seeds. Bivoltine hybrid loose eggs are purchased from silkworm seed production center. After black boxing, all the eggs will hatch and the first instar larvae, which are ant-like, will emerge. These first instar larvae mould four times and finally develop into fifth instar larva. Rearing of first, second and third instars is known as Chowki rearing. Rearing of fourth and fifth instars is known as late age rearing. During moulting, all the worms stop feeding and they will not show any body movement. First and second instars are very sensitive and the leaf with high moisture content can be cut into small pieces and fed to the worms. Whereas from the third instar, Shoot method of feeding can be followed. Fifth instar, ripe worms are transferred onto a mountage to have proper anchorage for spinning the cocoon. To protect the worms from pests and diseases, proper disinfection methods can be followed. Before entry into the rearing room, 
legs and hands must be disinfected lime powder and vegeta are dusted over the worms after completion of moulting to avoid moisture on the bed area appliances like hygrometer thermometer cooler etc can be used inside the rearing room to maintain congenial environment for the worms coming to the marketing of cocoons they can be harvested from the mount ages and transported to the nearby markets like tirumalgiri of sikindrabad jengaon hanuman junction located nearer to vijayawada coming to the cost benefit ratio so farmer will spend on mulberry cultivation labor disinfection procurement of eggs and for transport so on an average total amount spent will be around 7000 per crop a good rearing room will produce 80 to 100 kg of cocoons from 100 dfls so the cost of 1 kg of cocoons may vary from 300 to 400 rupees so a total benefit of 30000 to 40000 can be expected per crop so the total profit when we compare the cost and benefits so around 23000 to 33000 can be expected per crop పట్టుకురుగులు పెంచే రైతులకి జనరల్ గా అందరికి రెండు లక్షల పాతిక వేలు షెడ్ నిర్మాణానికి గవర్నమెంట్ సబ్సిడీ రూపాన ఇస్తారండి అదే ఎస్సీ కేటగిరీ అయితేనేమో మూడు లక్షల వరకు సబ్సిడీ ఉందండి ఎస్సీ కార్పొరేషన్ నుంచి అలాగే పెస్టిసైడ్స్ కూడా ఫిఫ్టీ పర్సెంట్ సబ్సిడీ మీద గవర్నమెంట్ ఇస్తుందండి రైతులకి అలా మొక్క కూడా నర్సరీ మొక్క కూడా మనకి సబ్సిడీ మీద ఒక మొక్క రెండు రూపాయలు చొప్పున గవర్నమెంట్ అందిస్తుందండి ఒక ఒక రైతు వంద పట్టుకుడ్లు పెంచినట్లయితే దానికి ఎనభై కేజీల నుంచి వంద కేజీలు మనకి ఈల్డ్ వస్తుంది అది గవర్నమెంట్ మార్కెట్ ధర మూడు వందల నుంచి నాలుగు వందల రూపాయలు ఉన్నట్టయితే కింట వచ్చేసి ముప్పై వేల నుంచి నలభై వేలు వరకు ఉంటుంది అది ఒక కింట వచ్చి రైతుకు వచ్చేది ముప్పై వేల నుంచి నలభై వేలు లాభం వస్తుంది ఒక ఒక పంటకి వంద గుడ్లు పెంచినట్లయితే అట్లా తోటను బట్టి ఎన్ని గుడ్లు కావాలో రైతు దాన్ని ఎన్నుకొని గుడ్లు తెచ్చుకొని పెట్టుకుంటే దాన్ని బట్టి ఆదాయం వస్తుంది ఫైనల్లీ టు కన్క్లూడ్ ప్రొడక్షన్ ఆఫ్ ఎ గుడ్ క్వాలిటీ కకూన్ డిపెండ్స్ ఆన్ రేరింగ్ షెడ్ ఎన్వైర్న్మెంట్ మల్బరీ లీఫ్ క్వాలిటీ సెలెక్షన్ ఆఫ్ రేస్ ఆఫ్ సిల్క్ వామ్ మెయింటెనెన్స్ ఆఫ్ డిస్ఇన్ఫెక్షన్ అండ్ హైజీన్ ఫైనల్లీ ప్రాపర్ మేనేజ్మెంట్ టెక్నిక్స్ వైల్డ్ రేరింగ్ as this is a year round source of income generation irrespective of climatic change government is encouraging the farmers into this area by providing so many subsidies and incentives thank you